No, it's not crazy to say that this Penn State basketball team can make the NCAA tournament. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily Penn State Nittany Lions podcast, and I'm your host, Zach Seiko. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Penn State defeats Indiana 83-74. to Let me know in the comments what you thought about this contest as Penn State is now back on a winning streak, defeating Illinois in rec hall, the return to rec, and now follows it up with a solid victory against the Hoosiers. But that's not even the biggest takeaway. I'll get to the Penn State-Indiana game specifically and what I saw from the Nittany Lions. But yes, Penn State can, in fact, still make the NCAA tournament. It is not out of the question here. They have, they have put together a quality resume, but they have to finish strong. They, they aren't going to make the tournament if they, don't finish, if they don't win the final three regular season games and then go on a run in the Big Ten tournament. Very similar to what they did a season ago with Micah Shrewsbury. So really deja vu again with Mike Rhodes here at the helm, but they control their own destiny. The Nittany Lions and Mike Rhodes are firmly in control of their own destiny here. You, you need to win out. You need to win the next three games. You could maybe afford one loss on the road. That Maryland game at home on senior day, you can't lose that one. But maybe Minnesota or Iowa is a mulligan here, but you'd rather be safe than sorry, right? So win all three games and then win two or three, ten, win two or three games in the Big Ten tournament. And then you've really made a good look, a good appearance to a good impression on the NCAA committee here. Plenty of 19 and 14 teams have made the big dance. We've seen that before. So they currently sit at 14 and 14. They're eight and nine in conference in a Big Ten conference that isn't exactly as loaded as it has been in years past, but it's still quality Division I basketball play, Power Four conference play here. Uh, Because, I mean, hey, people still think Iowa can make the NCAA tournament. They are eight and eight in conference. And people still think Rutgers can make the big dance. And they're six and nine in conference. So if Penn State has a better resume than these, and Penn State beat Iowa, and they get a second chance to get the series sweep, they get another chance to get that series sweep. However, if Penn State is you know, a big question mark here, and people don't necessarily believe that this team can, but Iowa and Rutgers have a good shot at it, Penn State certainly has as good of a chance as those two schools and anybody else that is on the bubble. Penn State needs to be in the bubble conversation here. But when I look at this schedule down the stretch, they don't play Purdue. Yeah, they got swept by Michigan State, but they don't play any of those teams that just are that just provide problems for them here. Iowa, Minnesota, Maryland, regardless of the venue, are all winnable games. They control their own destiny here. They they have the resume. They do. Other than the Bucknell game, other than the Bucknell game, that's a pretty bad loss. But what other games do you look at and say? You know what, Penn State, this is going to hold them back from making the tournament. If they can finish the season strong, they definitely can do it. This, Most importantly here, this team has bought into Mike Rhodes. They have bought into this system. They are going up against some serious adversity with Kanye Clary being dismissed from the team. Your leading scorer, one of the focal points on the offense, and is dismissed. That is your brother. That is your teammate. I don't sense any bad blood between himself and anybody else on the roster. This is strictly between head coach and player. And you have to overcome that. And Penn State has been better because of it. This team believes they can make the tournament. Mike Rhodes and company believe they can make the tournament. And now they are better. They're better than they were when they were playing the likes of Bucknell. You don't dismiss your leading scorer if you don't think that you're going to be a better team because of it. That was an executive decision by Mike Rhodes, and it's looking like it's paying off. Penn State is 4-1 and without Kanye Clary. Not since they dismissed him just overall. In the games that he's missed, Penn State is 4-1, and other than the Nebraska game. And the Nebraska game was a fluke because that was on the heels of the decision happening. Clary didn't travel to Lincoln, Nebraska. He didn't, even, he didn't go with the team. It's not like he was out for injury concerns like he was previously. And Nebraska's really good at home, as we've seen. But they have a better defense. They have a more efficient offense. The things that Clary was holding Penn State back from, they have now achieved. Everyone individually is playing so much better. This team is firing on all cylinders. 
So everyone who thought that this team would finish last in the Big Ten or very close to it might need to find another job covering basketball, college basketball, because this show was one of the few places where you found somebody buying into this Penn State team, at least being competitive, finishing around 500 in the Big Ten. I said that this had NC, this team had NCAA tournament qualities, but they had to find the chemistry over the course of the season, and now they have. They have the destiny. Destiny is theirs. If they can win these final games, just like a season ago, Penn State can definitely make the NCAA tournament if they go on a run like they did, but with this time with Mike, Re Mike Rhodes and Ace Baldwin leading the team as opposed to Jalen Pickett and Micah Shrewsbury. This is a recap episode of Penn State versus Indiana, so let's get to the game specifically. Penn State wins 83-74, to 14-14 overall, as I've mentioned, 8-9 and nine in conference now, and they sweep the season series of a quality Indiana basketball team. Now, Mike Woodson's probably getting fired at the end of the season. I've seen enough different Iowa shows, Locked on Hoosiers, everything else to know that Mike, uh, Mike Woodson is not in a good place right now with Indiana. So but this is a still respectable team and, and a talented team. I mean, Penn State really had the ideal game plan. Indiana can't shoot. They're bad at the free throw line. They're bad at the three-point line. So yes, they did give up some easy buckets. I mean, Indiana had what, 40 plus points in the paint? but they forced them to shoot selective shots that they didn't want to from three-point range. They fouled them a lot, and you're thinking, okay, with Penn State's uh, limited depth here since Kanye Clary's off the team and Demetrius Lilly is still working his way back into the lineup, wasn't available today, and Penn State doubled down on that fact and fouled them and forced them to shoot the basketball. They also got, and Penn State was aggressive. They got Kell L. Ware, somebody that, they're, they allowed 25 plus points to last time. They got him into foul trouble. So this was an excellent game plan. And Mike Rhodes, this is, and now I see why Mike Woodson is on the hot seat because Mike Rhodes coached circles around him and that Indiana coaching staff today. What more can we say about Ace Baldwin Jr.? Mr. Iron Man with Clary off the team, he's going to have to play 40 minutes every single game. And God forbid you have to go to overtime here, but Ace Baldwin can handle it. He can do it. And there's nobody else that can handle the ball right now. There's no other ball handler, true point guards on the team. But look at the way that Ace Baldwin is handling this responsibility. 23 points, 9 assists, and 4 steals. Mr. Iron Man, Indiana had no answer for him. Had no answer for him, truly. And then this is why I like to say, this is why I made the point that Penn State, individually, everybody is playing better. Zach Hicks, I'm not trying to insinuate that he's he has been a liability or anything like that, but I definitely, over the course of the season, when is, when is Zach Hicks, the sharpshooter, going to break out? When are we going to see him turn a corner? Because this is supposed to be one of your veterans and one of the better playmakers on your team, and now we're seeing that. Stone cold against Illinois to help them win that game with the three clutch free throws, and then followed it up today with 17 points and four of eight from three-point range. That's his game. That's his forte, shooting 50% from three-point range. And I had seven rebounds, too. I'm going to get to Kudus Wahab in just a second, but seven rebounds away from the guy who's going to attack the glass. So Hicks just doing so much better overall. Another player that's seen, seen an increase in time, an increase in minutes responsibility, DeMarco Dunn, another transfer, and Dunn. We want to talk about better defense, and better efficiency on offense. Well, DeMarco Dunn is a big reason, a big part of that. 23 minutes played, and you get 13 points. I understand if Ace Baldwin's going to lead your scorers because he's playing 40 minutes a game. But when DeMarco Dunn is able to come in, now he's a starter. He's moved into the starting lineup instead of being that sixth man off the bench. But 23 minutes, and he gives you 13 points. That is as efficient as it comes. So this Penn State offense is taking a turn from this quick, attacking, Kind of a bowl in the China shop mentality when it's more of court. Now it's coordinated, concise, and efficient. And then there's Q, as I mentioned, Kadus Wahab, another double double, another double double, attacking the glass, 11 points, 11 rebounds. And he is giving it his all right now. Kadus Wahab, for him to play 31 minutes against Indiana, that does, you know, they got some athletic big players, but they're not afraid to run. They're a fast team. And Wahab giving it his all when Demetrius Lilly's not available. You want to see more out of favor, I Ray. So talking about getting some value out of Wahab, who would probably be better suited for 25 minutes, definitely under 30. But going over that 30-minute mark uh, goes along with this Ironman mentality that we can put on Ace Baldwin 
I'd bring it over to Caduce Wahab too. But do you see what happens? Do you see my point when one player isn't taking 33% of the shots? Everyone benefits. This group, this team has always been a well-rounded, balanced group because they do so many things differently, but they do them well. Caduce Wahab, your traditional center. Ace Baldwin, a very defensive-oriented player, but can turn it on offensively at any given moment. Nick Kern Jr. is an extension of that. We saw how he performed against Illinois. You're seeing my point, though, is that all of these players do something very well. Zach Hicks is a three-point shooter. Some players play really good defense. Some of them can play good, good offense, efficient offense. And now you're kind of coupling all these things, and you're finding the chemistry that they've been looking for all season long. They're good at a little bit of everything, which means they are never in a bad matchup. Sure, there's going to be better teams. There's going to be more talented teams, but Penn State is never going to find itself in a situation, well, they better not run into that team because they do X, Y, Z well. Penn State's never going to be in a bad matchup, per se. Next game they got is a road game against Iowa. That's on Tuesday. That's February 27th, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time tip-off. Very winnable game, as I mentioned, and they beat them in the Bryce Jordan Center when Kanye Clary was back in the lineup after that injury to the face. But Iowa is vying, is vying for a tournament spot, too, so it's not going to be easy. This one, again, out in Iowa, so you have to go into that road environment. But Penn State, they, they are in a position right now where you have to feel pretty good about this team because they have nothing to lose. They're facing adversity. Nobody gave this team outside of this show a legitimate chance of vying for postseason spots. And here we are. Everybody doubted this team. So they got nothing to lose and they can play like it. And those are the teams that I like across the board. I don't care what sport it is. Teams that play like they have nothing to lose. They play fearless. They play aggressive. They play smart. And they try to play spoiler here. And that's what Penn State's doing as we approach March. This is the Locked On Nittany Lines podcast. I appreciate you checking out the show. Leave a like, share this episode with friends and family, and I do want to hear back from you in the comments. Do you think Penn State can win, can beat Iowa, win out the season, and make the NCAA tournament? I want to hear from you. For more Penn State sports content in general, we talk everything on this show. Men's basketball, wrestling, men's hockey, football, recruiting, all that more is here on Locked On Nittany Lions.